Hi everyone, welcome to Pawpaw's Workshop. You know it's not spring, but it's still a good time to be able to organize the cabinets. And today, I'm going to take all my paints and put, build this paint storage rack, and it holds 28 bottles of paint. I'm using the easel software to design it and be able to cut it out on the x car. So let me go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how I did it. Okay, I've opened up a new window in Easel, and the first thing that I want to do is go over to my settings for the size of the material, and I'm going to type in on the x-axis 24 inches, my y-axis is going to be 17 inches, and the thickness of the material was 0.23. I measured the cabinet where this paint rack is going to be, and the width of it is 14 inches. So I'm going to start out with a rectangle. And this rectangle I'm going to set at 6 inches by 13 and 3 quarters. Now granted I can stretch it this way and move it this way to be able to come close. Alright, we're going to type in the 13.75. And this is going to be 6 inches on the height. The next thing that I want is I want to have two notches in here to be able to receive the uprights. Well, we can go back over here. I want to be able to have that at 0.25, actually 0.23, excuse me. And I want to be able to have the length at 3 inches. Okay, that gives me the size that I need. Now the other thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to have one on this side. I'm going to put one in the middle, and I'm also going to put one on the right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is copy this and give me three of them to begin with. So Control-C, Control-V, and we'll do Control-V one more time. Now that gives me the three that I need. So I'm going to put one right there. The other one will go here. And I'm going to keep this one out for a moment. I'll put it in the middle shortly. To begin the process of adding this small rectangle into this piece, and I want it precisely located, I want to position my base at a specific point in reference to this spot right here so that I can do that without having to just take the object and try to guess the alignment because that certainly would not be the exact location that I want it to be in. So to do that, I'm going to move this out of the way. Let's highlight this first. So we're going to select this at 2 inches and then I'm going to put this y-axis at 4. So now I know exactly that this point is my 2 and my 4 and it's precisely located. Well, now I'm going to highlight this and where do I want this one located? Alright, now then to be able to move it on my XY axis we're going to move this over to 2 and then I'm going to have that bottom corner an inch and a half above the 4 so that is going to be 5.5 so I type in 5.5, move it, and that gives me the exact location that I want it. Now while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and do the cut and change this to zero. So I have a zero depth. So now I have the base completed with the exception of putting this into the center. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and combine this as one item. And by doing that, I'm going to highlight everything. I'm going to come up and select Edit and Combine. Now, this moves as one piece anywhere that I want to put it. While I have this, I'm going to need to have dog bones put in this location. 
So we're going to come up to the apps, select that, <clears throat> slide down to the dog bone generator, and that pushed the little dog bones in right there on those four corners. So that is okay. I don't need to do anything else here. I can import that in. And now I'm going to take this and slide it out of the way. This is a piece that I'm going to be working with. And on this one, I'm going to be doing the same thing. I'm going to come down here, precisely locate it in the center. And this I want cut all the way through. All right. So with that done, this first piece is completed. Well, the next thing I want to do is create the racks that the paint actually sit in. And to do that, I'm going to create another rectangle. And this rectangle is going to be 13 inches, 13.75, the same width as what we had before. And the height of this is going to be 3 inches. So that is going to be the basic size of the rack that I have. And now what I need to do is put holes in here to be able to accept a paint. So to be able to do that, I'm going to grab my circle. I'm going to bring that up here. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and lighten that. I don't want it the same darkness as my workpiece. And I need to have this set for a diameter to be able to accept the bottles of paint. And I measured those and I know that it was 1.3 was the size of my bottle. So I'm going to set this at 1.5 to get a little bit of wiggle room. So I lock this and then I'm going to change this to 1.5 inches and that creates my circle. Now we're going to need quite a few of these, actually seven coming across. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and make copies of this. Now what I'm going to do is as we did before, I'm going to position these with exactly the precise location. And right now I'm just putting them basically into position. And this is why you can't do it just by eyeballing it because you can't get it precise enough. But with just a little bit of math, I can get this exactly where I want it. Next thing we would do after we have them in place is select all of them and barely touch all of my circles so my circles are highlighted and then we're going to take and select a cut depth of zero. With a zero cut depth this is what we get and what am I going to do? I'm going to combine everything and now I have one piece that I can move around. The next thing I want to do is have a little slot right here so that it will slide into my vertical piece. Okay, here is this piece completed now. I have my offset here to be able to slide into my vertical piece. All these are all centered exactly where they needed to be. So this piece is now completed. Okay, this is what the riser looks like when I finish the artwork. And the real question is, how do I get such an intricate design using an easel? Well, you break it down into small pieces. This component, we're going to create four rectangles. Each of these rectangles are going to be one inch tall on all three, on all four of these and they're going to be shorter in length by an inch and a half. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and come up and grab my first rectangle and I'm going to make that rectangle under the shape. I'm going to make it where it is my six inches and I want that to be one inch tall. 
So that is the first piece. And if I take that, you can see that that would fit perfectly right in there. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is I have to have this little piece added to be able to slip into the slot on my base. Okay, to be able to move this in position, my y-axis is going to be 13. That puts it right in line with the bottom edge. I know this, exactly where this is, which is 11, so I need that to be 12 and a half. So that's 12.5. And now I have that exactly where I want it. So I'm going to go ahead and combine this piece by selecting my edit, combine, and I now have this piece that I can move around. So I'm going to go ahead and complete the next three, put them on top, and I'll show you when it's finished that this is what we're going to have. All right, with this sample completed now for my riser, the only thing that was left is to create the dog bones. I had shown you how to do that before. So this is the finished piece and that really maximizes everything. Now the other thing that I want to do, because I'm using my super glue and tape method, I do not need to use the tabs. So with this in place and this cut all the way through, I'm not going to use the tabs. Well, my son dropped by for a few minutes and it was a nice visit. But for today's project, I'm using a piece of scrap masonite from my scrap bin and I'm cutting it 24 inches wide. Once this is cut, and we got to lift it up to get it over that edge of the uh, workbench for the outfeed table, then I want to turn it and we're going to cut it 17 inches. The super glue and tape method of holding down eliminates the needs for the clamps and it only works if you catch all the work pieces. Here I missed that work piece and I was holding it down and lo and behold I broke a bit. Now that I have the new bit in the X carve, I don't want to carve those first two pieces. So what I'm doing is opening up in easel a rectangle and covering those first two pieces so it will not carve again. And I'm setting the uh, slide bar to zero and now it will not carve those two pieces and it'll go directly over and start cutting the remaining pieces out. Now I hit carve and follow the checklist. When I hit carve, the machine went to where I did not expect it. So it is actually carving air right now on an unexpected plate. Now looking back at the computer, you can see that great big blue area in the carved section. That's what it's trying to carve, that white square that I put in there. So the first thing I did is I moved the material to the front on that white space and it looks clear. The one thing I didn't do is run a simulation. And I should have run the simulation, but instead I went ahead and hit carve and started the next step. When I hit carve, the machine did the exact same thing. It moved over and started cutting air again. Upon a closer look at the computer, you see it has a .0996. When I used the slide bar, it didn't go all the way to zero. Now it's at zero. And this time I ran a simulation to be able to make sure that it carved exactly the way I wanted to. So in the interest of saving time, I actually lost time. This time, when I hit carve, the machine did exactly what it was supposed to do, and it moved to the new pieces to be able to cut, eliminating the part that I had already done. Now that machine's back on track, is cutting out all the parts. This was a fun project to do, and everything assembled actually quite nicely, and I used super glue to put all the parts together, and it did take a little bit of sanding just to clean up the edges.